Hey, natural science students, it's Mr. Frida. I'm shooting this video so that you have an opportunity to continue to see some practice for the making chemical uh, formulae and for naming chemical compounds that we've been doing over the last couple of class periods. And so this is the handout that students who have class on Monday will see. If you have class on Tuesday, I hope you're watching this video and we'll see some more examples because when any student walks into class Wednesday, Thursday, you will be taking a quiz right away at the beginning of the mod. First thing that I want to point out to you is that there are two errors in this first line that says sodium and chlorine. You'll notice that we have step one, the chemical symbols are written down. Step two, uh, we wrote down the oxidation numbers. If I were to add something to this picture right here, let's go ahead and get the pen. Okay, we have crisscrossed applesauce right here. Okay, and then here's our final chemical formula. Now there are two errors on this line. I'll give you a hint. One error has to do with how the chlorine is written. One error has to do with how chloride is written in this name. And so try to find those errors as part of your exercise here. At this point, let's go ahead and do the magnesium and fluorine example so that you can see some more practice for uh, making chemical formulas. So first things first, our first step is always to find the chemical symbols. You need to get used to to finding elements on the periodic table. And so if I just skip ahead to a periodic table real quick, those are all the examples that I'm going to do. Here's magnesium right here. And you know, while we're here, why don't we just grab step two as well? So we find magnesium, it's symbol Mg, and it is a plus two for the oxidation number or charge. Let's go ahead and find fluorine. Fluorine is over on this side. It's a nonmetal. Remember, metals are always written on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Nonmetals are always written on the right-hand side. Here's fluorine. We look above the column, we see a minus one. So let's go back to our example, magnesium and fluorine. So step one, I'm going to write M, G for the symbol, and I'm going to write F for fluorine for the symbol. So that's step one. Step two, we write down our charges as superscripts. Okay, so we have a plus two for magnesium. And I'm doing this with my mouse, so just bear with me that the text is not necessarily going to be a very high uh, uh, legibility I'll try to go slow so you can really so it's, see what's going on. That's a plus two. I mean, the alternative is that I can make a new text box every time, but um, that could be a little bit cumbersome. So step two, we are having the charges out here. Step three, we're going to crisscross Applesauce. And so the plus two comes down there. The minus one comes down here. If we were to rewrite this, this would look like Mg minus one and fluorine plus two. And we gotta follow our rules for writing chemical formulae so we don't write ones, we don't, or we don't write, write minuses and pluses, we don't write ones. So our final chemical formula here would be M, G, F, two. Now we have to name this. Well, for our name, we have to find all of our normal, follow all of our normal rules for naming. The metal is uppercase, always. We don't see any Roman numerals here, so we don't have to write any Roman numerals in parentheses here. The non-metal is always lowercase, but if it's just a single element like this, like fluorine, instead of writing fluorine, I'm going to write fluoride. You know, when you learn about how there's fluoride in toothpaste, that's actually sodium fluoride that is in toothpaste. It's actually a compound, but the name fluoride comes from what the chemical name is following our naming rules. Okay, let's go to the next one. You know, for this one, maybe I'll try to type it out, see how it goes. Now, we have tin. We're going to have to find tin on the periodic table as well as sulfur. So let's look at our periodic table. Tin is actually a post-transition metal. It's located right here, SN. Now we look above the column, uh-oh, this one says plus four or minus four. Well, if it's written in the first place, it's acting as the post-transitional metal, metal here, so we're going to use plus four for tin. And then sulfur, right here, we look above the column, we see a minus two. Alrighty. 
We can also see tin is here on our happy fun sheet of transition metals and polyatomic ions. Notice how it comes in two flavors. It comes as a four or it comes as a two. You really wouldn't have to look at the happy fun sheet to do this particular problem because remember the Roman numeral tells you everything that you need. And remember there was a sheet that I handed out to you in large group on Friday. Uh, one side of it contains the transition metals and polyatomic ions is the happy fun sheet and the other side is all the steps. So you can use that as resources. Okay, so tin, four, and sulfur. Let's go ahead and write this out. Going to get the text feature here. Tin is SN and sulfur is S. Okay, and then I'm going to make a new text box here. For our charges, tin was a plus two, sorry, plus four from our Roman numeral. This is a Roman numeral four. And then sulfur is is a minus two, that's from the periodic table. So there we go. Step three, Kreskroff Applefoth. So let's go ahead and get our, let's get an arrow line going here so we can see how our crisscrossing is happening. Criss, cross. There we go. Yeah, I like this better than just handwriting it. So, you know, we adapt as we go. Now, if I were to rewrite this, the final formula would look like S N the negative two comes down here and then S and the positive four comes down here but we gotta follow all of our rules we don't write minuses we don't write pluses okay so our final formula is S N two S Four. Now to name this, we have to make sure we continue to follow all of our rules. So going back to text here, the name for this is metal capitalized, tin. But since this is a transition metal, well in this case a post-transition metal that has variable bonding, we need to put the Roman numeral in parentheses. Lowercase s for the non-metal. But instead of saying sulfur, it's going to end as sulfide. Tin for sulfide is our name for this. Let's do one more. This one's going to be beryllium and hydroxide ion. Now, when you see ion in this name, ion is an indication that you're going to look at the happy fun sheet for this. But we are going to have to use our periodic table for beryllium. So let's look at our periodic table, beryllium, okay, beryllium, it was on the left-hand side, so we're going to find it on the left-hand side somewhere over here. Here it is, beryllium, B-E, and you know what, while we're here, why don't we just find the oxidation number, the charge, the plus two. Now, hydroxide and hydrogen are not the same thing. Some of you may be inclined to say, hey, hydrogen, that kind of looks like it, not good enough. We need to go to our happy fun sheet our polyatomic ions, and these are all listed alphabetically. Here's hydroxide, and it is an OH in parentheses with a minus one on the outside. So be aware that you got to keep these parentheses where they are. It is like a force field. We can't break that force field. We're not going to change anything inside these parentheses. So going back to our example, beryllium is BE. And hydroxide is an OH in parentheses. Now let's get our charges down here. Our charge for beryllium was a plus 2. And our charge for hydroxide was a minus 1. Step 3, your favorite step, my favorite step, everyone's favorite step, Krithkroth Applefoth. The plus 2 gets crisscrossed down outside of the parentheses. The minus one gets crisscrossed down. Okay, so if I were to rewrite this, the temporary formula would be BE, and the minus one gets crisscrossed down, and then we got to keep this parentheses. Everything in the parentheses stays the same no matter what happens. It's like a force field, nothing changes. This plus two goes outside the parentheses. That is super important. Get rid of minuses. We get rid of pluses. We get rid of ones. So our final chemical formula here is B, 
E, we don't write the one, parentheses, O, H, two goes outside the parentheses. Now, for naming this, we still follow the same rules. The difference is, since we have a polyatomic ion here, we have to be careful that we're following our rules. So this would be capital B beryllium. Okay, now normally this second part is lowercase, right? It stays lowercase. But we're going to write exactly what the name was for this since it's a polyatomic ion. Hydroxide. Okay, because it is specifying a specific ion that is made up of more than one atom in parentheses. So that's it. That's basically what you're going to see. What I'm going to encourage you to do here is remember that you can use your happy fun sheet on a test. You can use a periodic table on a test. So really what you need to do is practice everything that is remaining. So all the remaining examples that you see here, you're going to practice. You should try to combine potassium and oxygen and name it. Francium and acetine, rubidium and arsenic. These are all like the ones that we did on the first day. You're going to find all of these atoms on the periodic table as well as, as, well as their charges. We did tin, 4, and sulfur. I want you to try copper, 2, and bromine. Remember, copper, 2 is a transition metal, so this tells you everything that you need to know about the charge on copper. Uh, we did beryllium and hydroxide just now. I want you to um, try hydrogen and sulfate ion. You'll find sulfate ion. This word ion tells you that you're going to find this on the hop happy fun sheet down at the bottom table. And then combining all this together, this last one is the challenge problem right here. You want to combine iron 2, a transition metal, with nitrate ion. Iron 2 tells you everything that you need to know about the charge. Nitrate ion, you know that you're going to find this in parentheses on the happy fun sheet. And so go through this process of step 1, writing down the symbols. Step 2, writing down the charges. Step 3, Chris Kraft Applethoff. Step four, clean it up, write down the accurate chemical formula here, and then you need to follow all the rules for naming. The metal is capitalized and written first. If there was a Roman numeral, you got to write the Roman numeral in the middle. The nonmetal is always lowercase and written second. If it was a single element on the periodic table, it ends in IDE. If it was something that you found on the happy fun sheet, like one of these polyatomic ions, it ends in whatever the name is. And so there you go. There's some practice for what we've been doing with chemical formulae. Hopefully this helps you. Remember, we have a quiz the first half of Wednesday, Thursday when you come back to class. And then second half of Wednesday, Thursday, we will be introducing chemical recipes where the real fun begins. Haha, <laughs> we got a bell 